Hello, hello, my name is Julian Duque. I am a principal developer advocate here at Salesforce, and today I will show you how to perform HTTP requests using the Fetch API. The Fetch API is the standard HTTP request for JavaScript. You can use it from Lightning Web Components or any other JavaScript application. For example, from Node.js. Let's take a look at the application we built and how we perform all of those HTTP requests. We will create a QR code application using an external API. This API supports two endpoints, one to create a QR code by sending a data parameter and another to read a QR code by sending a file. Since this is a third-party API, we will need to enable access to it on our Salesforce org by setting up the remote site settings and adding the base URL of the API. Also, since the requests are going to be performed by the web browser using LWC, we will need to add the API to our content security policy trust sites, enabling the connect source policy. Now let's take a look at our two components, create QR code and read QR code. To create a QR code, we need to send a data parameter. In this case, we will send an URL to encode. After we click create, we receive a PNG image from the API. Let's download that image so we can read it again with the API. Now we can drop the file to our input file LWC component. After we click read, it will send the file to the API and a JSON with the decoded data will be returned. Let's see how we implemented the two requests. For the create QR code component, we will perform a GET request using promises. Our data parameter to send is the URL we are getting from the input text component. Let's construct our final URL by adding the required query parameters to our base API URL. We need data and also the size parameter. Let's say it will be a 100 by 100 pixels QR code. The API requires that the data is encoded as an URL. For that, we will use the encode URI component method from JavaScript. Then let's use the fetch API to perform our HTTP request. The first argument is the URL, and the second argument is an object with options. Here we can define options like the HTTP method, the headers, the body, etc. After we resolve the first promise, we get the response object. With this object, we can check if the response is successful or if there is an error with the request. Also, as its name states, we can get the response from the request. In our case, we know that the API returns an image, so we will treat it as a blob. That means a binary object. That binary object needs to be converted to a base64 image in order to be rendered. For that, we will use a JavaScript file reader to convert the blob. Since this is an asynchronous operation, we will wrap it within a promise to continue with the execution chain. Finally, we can set the source of our image component to the base64 image we just converted. Some final touches. Let's use a show toast event to perform proper error notification to our users. And voila, our create QR code component is done. For the read QR code component, we will use a pose request. This time, we will use async await instead of promises to perform the fetch request. We will send the file as a part of the form data and we will get the decoded result as JSON. Let's create the form data object by using the form data interface, adding the file from the input file component and the output format that the API requires, in our case, JSON. Then we get the response by awaiting the fetch method this time, our options object specify the method as post and the body, which is the payload to send to the API, 
properties. It is set to the form data object. We check if there is an error from the response object, and if not, let's get the result as JSON. Notice that we need to await the JSON method in order to get the result. And finally, don't forget to notify potential errors to your users by sending a show toast event. Make sure to take a look at the resource shared with this video if you want to learn more, especially the Fetch API documentation. Here you can take a look at all of the different options you can pass to the configurations object. And also check the following quick take by Aditya, where he explains more about content security policy and course. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Developers. Also make sure to click on the bell so you receive notifications every time we upload a new video content for you. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you, you apply these new concepts that you learned today. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.